Welcome to Lincoln Park Guide TV. I'm your host, Anthony Maynard, and today we are here with Sean Boyle, Executive Director of the Children's Services Council. Sean is a respected member in the community, a person who is leading an organization that has had mega impact. We want to welcome him and we're going to learn about that organization, uh, their presence in Lincoln Park, and what they're currently up to. Sean, welcome to the show. Uh, we want to start off just asking you to talk a little bit about yourself, how you came to this community, whether you're a native or not, how you came to Children's Services Council, and uh, just a little bit about Lincoln Park and your program focus there. Sure, thanks for having me on the show, Anthony. Greatly appreciate it. Real quick, my, my quick background in 30 seconds or less, I am not a native of Florida. I grew up in Indianapolis, Indiana, and came to Florida via Chicago back in 1997. Uh, my wife and I had just had our newborn and we were living in Chicago. And not too surprisingly, it's very expensive to live in Chicago. So uh, my in-laws actually lived here. So we moved into Stewart and then I've lived in St. Lucie County in, since 1998. And I answered a job ad on my travel from Chicago to Florida to work at the Children's Services Council in 1997 as the program and training specialist. I believe that was my title. Um, and obviously 23, 23 years later, and particularly in the last 10 years, I've been serving as the executive director. Now, we at the Children's Services Council, if you're not familiar with who we are and what we do, we do five things. We have five areas in our community, and those areas are one, to make sure every baby's a healthy baby, two, to stop child abuse before it happens, three, to keep kids off the streets, four, to keep them in school, and the five, to keep them off drugs, alcohol, and other risky behaviors. And we do that by offering programs and resources for all children and families in St. Lucie County. We currently work with closely, and when we, when we say work with, we, we work behind the scenes to provide them funding as well as support to make sure that their program is effective. Uh, 50 programs that last year, pre-COVID mind you, but last year reached over 40,000 children in St. Lucie County. And we do have a focus um, uh, all throughout the county, but we do have a lot of programs, particularly for the Lincoln Park area, a lot of after school programs. And we just implemented something to help the mothers and soon to be mothers in Lincoln Park area, something that I'm very proud of. It's a doula program. It's a birthing coach program to help those uh, expectant mothers in Lincoln Park specifically. Wow, that's great. Um, happy to hear uh, all of that. I didn't realize you were from Indianapolis. Um, that's cool, Midwest. Yeah, I, I want to clarify though, because every time I say Indianapolis, everybody thinks that I grew up with cornfields. I grew up in the city of Indianapolis, a million plus people, a very much a urban area. I just want to clarify that. Okay, and by way of the windy city and, and, and the cold in Chicago, and now you're here in Florida, um, doing great things. We're, we're glad that you made the migration down, Sean. I'm not sure what all uh, CSC would be doing without you at this point. Um, as you may know, uh, we have started the Protecting the Village campaign in Lincoln Park. Um, it's a campaign that is a community awareness campaign and covers COVID, uh, the census, the 2020 vote, um, as well as the Economic, Economic Development Council opportunities um, that are now on the table. Um, with that campaign, uh, we have been going through the community and trying to find other areas where uh, there's need present, uh, where our services um, could be used or of benefit. Now, one of those areas that we're noticing is with young people and the schools in general. Um, the COVID has created a situation with the schools where now we've got some of the kids at home, we've got some in school, it can get a little bit confusing. And my understanding is that CSC has started a launch pad program. If you could tell us a little bit about that and how that applies. Sure, uh, and I appreciate that opportunity. So we partnered with St. Lucie County utilizing some what they call CARES dollars, which is federal dollars to address the COVID uh, pandemic across, across the nation, really. And what we've done is we've taken 15 of our after school programs and asked that they, and, and they volunteered to sign up for this. They're actually open during the day. And, and I, I wanna make sure that everybody understands this. One, it's free uh, if you're an essential employee. An essential employee is anybody that works in the medical industry, the government, retail, uh, restaurant, construction, uh, 
essential workers is a very broad definition per Florida. They can utilize this service for free or anybody that qualifies economically. And economically, the, the threshold for an example is you can be a family of four and make $83,000 and still qualify. So we think a lot of families will qualify for this. And what it is is we have 15 county or 15 sites across St. Lucie County where those families that have chosen to do virtual learning, maybe they're not comfortable sending their child to brick and mortar because of COVID, or maybe they have a household member that uh, maybe is elderly, maybe it's a grandparent taking care of a child and they don't wanna be uh, exposed or have that risk of exposure to COVID. For those families that have chosen virtual learnings, they can send them to what we are calling the learning launch pad sites, which are one to nine ratio, everybody's masked, sanitize, frequent hand washing, and they help facilitate those children through their virtual learning school day. It's open Monday through Friday. It follows the same schedule as the school. And in addition, breakfast and lunch is provided thanks to St. Lucie County Schools. We have about 450 slots available across the county and a little over half of them are currently taken, but we have several of those locations in the Lincoln Park area. So if I'm a parent uh, in the Lincoln Park area beyond and I'm interested in that, how do I get involved? Who do I contact? How do I go about finding out more? Sure. The information is available on our website. Um, and I always hate to give out a website address because, you know, it's always so fast and it's, it's an acronym. It's the acronym for Children's Services Council, St. Lucie County. So the website is CSC slc.org look for the space shuttle graphic called learning launchpad you can find all that information there or quite honestly you can just go to some of our locations in the lincoln park area uh, the boys and girls club both the percy peak gym the infinity center off 23rd and i as well as the garden terrace right by uh, uh, ca moore also uh, in the image, which is literally right behind CA Moore, is also a site right there in the area, as well as Future Generations, which is um, uh, across the canal in that Lincoln Park area. And also, now that I think about it, also Multicultural Resource Center off 23rd Street, Frontline for Kids, and Lindsay School of the Arts are those the, the ones that I can think of immediately off the top of my head. Wow. Off the top of your head, that's a lot. Uh, we thank you for that. Uh, that information will be beneficial to a lot of the listeners, I'm sure. Um, now, as it relates to that program and uh, your other programs and services as a whole for CSC, uh, you know, the Launchpad program is made necessary by COVID. And I wanted to ask you from your perspective as an executive director, uh, what is the primary impact or what are some of the main impacts that COVID has had, some of the main changes that you guys have had to make at CSC due to this pandemic? Sure. One of the, I'll start with what we had to do at CSC and then I'll, I'll go to what I, I okay. see a lot in families. <laughs> and I can experience this not only from my work, but quite honestly from my family as well. Right. But as an agency, one of the first things that we did with our agent, uh, with the programs that we fund and work with is we continue to fund them. While they were figuring out what they were going to do, we did not pull back money if they weren't immediately serving children. We knew that we had to be that stable economic force for them so that they could have the flexibility and the comfort level to figure out what they were going to do. And That's I'm proud great. to say all of them pivoted rather quickly within two, two weeks to a month. Most of them... Um, some of them continue to do uh, in-person services. Some of our after-school programs went to smaller ratios, one to nine ratios, masked, uh, sanitizing. Other programs went to more of a, a, what they call a telehealth model, where and maybe instead of going to your home, they call you on the phone or they FaceTime mm -hmm. you and continue to do those type of services. I think one of the things, and, and I should say all of our programs and resources that we make available, again, are on, on our website at CSC slc.org as well as we tried to post other uh, resources that maybe aren't directly affiliated with us but a lot of families struggling in the pandemic could uh, could access uh, particularly the county that has some funding available for families uh, but one of the things that I tell people when when asked the question about what do you see a change is if everybody you know if you look at a stress level right yeah. um, you know on a normal day in a non-pandemic depending on your household you may be at a you know, any parent will know you're at a, like a two or a three is like your starting line, right? Just and, and just being frank, just by having kids, that's a huge responsibility. Yes, sir. Whether you're the parent, the grandparent, or the caregiver. Yes, sir. Uh, but when you throw in a pandemic where 
you, you have to be worried about going outside. You have to make that decision whether you can yeah. send your child to school. Everybody's bottom stress level is at a five and just goes up from there. So what we're seeing a lot is a lot of households that are stressed. Mm -hmm. a, lot of, a lot of parents stressing with, you know, now that I can't send my child out to go play with his friends or go do this or that, they're in the home a lot more. So a lot more uh, stressful situations. So we, we've implemented some resources through our great community partners to help diffuse some of that household stress. And one of the things that just launched, and I'm actually, this timing of being your guest is perfect. Okay. A great partner of ours is Families of the Treasure Coast. Uh, formerly known as the Parent Academy, but now rebranded as Families of the Treasure Coast, they just implemented a parent warm line. So if you're a parent and you're and you're like to your wits end because your kids are driving you crazy, the schooling is too much, or you just need some advice, or quite honestly, you just need somebody to talk to, they have a warm line that is available pretty much 24 hours a day. And you don't always have to call because sometimes when you call, you know, the hardest, sometimes the hardest thing is taking that first step and making that call. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, yeah, even I would prefer to text somebody a lot of times, right? It's easier. I don't have to put my, I don't feel it's a little bit less personal, if you will. So their parent warm line, you can call, you can text, or you can even do it through Facebook. Um, but we found that a lot of parents are accessing that as well as uh, the hibiscuses, strengthening families in crisis. And okay. really what I'm saying is we know that there's a lot of stress in the community. It's impacted at the workplace. It's impacted in schools. And of course, it's impacted at your house and your home and there are resources to help you get through that okay a warm line I definitely like the sound of that um, I know plenty of parents and through my own experience having the kids at home uh, a warm line is definitely a great idea Sean we we thank you for that and I'm sure that people reach out and use that resource um, you know we thank you for what you do as CSC as a whole I know one of the um, organizations that you support, the Roundtable of St. Lucie County, uh, they hopped on board to our Mask Up Challenge last week, and actually we got a winner out of the uh, Ignite Youth Alliance. Oh, that's um, great. So thank you for your support there and all that you're doing in the community to help Lincoln Park. Are there any, you have anything else in the pipeline, any next steps for CSC before we close out here? Sure. We are, uh, in the upcoming month, uh, we're doing two things uh, that your viewers might be interested in. One is we do this every year, and we think that we hopefully will have more of a normal summer in the upcoming <laughs> summer. I know that seems like it's far away, but uh, what we do every year is all of our after-school programs turn into summer programs, but we know that summertime is a tough time to capture kids' attention, so we actually expand what we offer. So we're going to release an application for anybody that wants to submit a proposal to provide a summer program, and I know it sounds strange thinking about summer, but we realize that you got a plan and we're hoping for the best. Yeah. And uh, another thing that we're going to do in November is we're going to release an application and it really hits upon Anthony what you just said about uh, or what we just talked about about what we're seeing in households mm -hmm. we realize that even the kids are having struggles oh, with yeah. this pandemic and even outside the pandemic they just have struggles with you know maybe trauma or a family dynamic and we've actually heard directly from youth in our after-school programs that they need counseling uh, and some support that Great way. Point. So we are putting out an RFP and we hope to have it, uh, we're gonna release it in November, we hope to have it implemented in February. That's an aggressive time frame for us. Uh, but uh, we're going to integrate mental health services into our after-school programs to make sure that kids uh, have the skills to cope with anxiety and stress and so that they can reach their fullest potential. Awesome, 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 awesome. So everyone viewing this video will have that information. Um, we hope that you take advantage of it as much as possible. Um, we want to thank Sean for coming out and visiting us and interviewing with us. We thank you for sharing the information, Sean. Uh, and we will uh, hopefully see you again in the future as you tell us more about CSC, what it's doing, and all of its new initiatives. We thank you for joining us. Um, thank you for joining us in terms of Lincoln Park TV. We will have a new guest for you coming up here shortly and moving further into the fall. Look forward to talking to you then. This is your host, Anthony Maynard. 
Goodbye.